All right, gang, I just got out of the sequel that everybody on planet Earth has been clamoring for for years, Finding Dory. No, just kidding. I actually saw Now You See Me Part Duh tonight. Um, probably one of the most unlikely, if not unnecessary sequels to come out of Hollywood in a long time. I certainly understand that Now You See Me 1 was a modest success. It actually made a pretty good return on its investment. Was it screaming out sequel? What Was the public really clamoring for a sequel? I mean, I talked to a lot of people who enjoyed the first movie and almost none of them said, yeah, I want to see a sequel to this film. I was certainly not among one of them at all. Um, and you know what, I was not a hater of Now You See Me 1. I certainly wasn't a big fan of the film. Uh, I thought it was really completely disposable. I, I think that I, I didn't like the plot machinations in the film. Um, I thought it was really silly and preposterous. I think even though the cast is likable and charming, they didn't play likable and charming characters. I thought that the characters were really sort of wise-ass jerks in the first film. Uh, the plot twists were stupid. I just, I just didn't really buy into the movie at all. And you know, if you really stop and think about great movies involving magicians and illusionists, I mean, there's films like Christopher Nolan's Underrated, The Prestige. And I say underrated in the sense that when people talk about great Christopher Nolan films, that's a film that's not brought to the forefront immediately. And then also like Ed, the Ed Norton film, The Illusionist. I mean, those films feel, feel like filet mignon fine course meals compared to the $1.39 extra value meal cheeseburger that this film is. So, I mean, now you see me too. Obviously, it takes place after the events of the first film. Uh, there's been a couple casting revisions, like Isla Fisher is no longer back. We have Lizzie Kaplan. I really like Lizzie Kaplan as an actress. I think she's very underrated. I like the low-key matter that she plays a lot of her characters. I thought she was sensational on Masters of Sex. Here, though, she's just all over the map. I think she's kind of histrionic, and she's desperately trying to wring laughs out of the film that maybe aren't there. Um, I thought she was really just kind of borderline annoying and I, I, I would hate to say that about Lizzie Kaplan because I really like her work. Um, something also has to be said about the casting of Daniel Radcliffe as the main villain in this film and it's hardly not a spoiler to say that he's in this film because he was spoiled in the trailers and I think this film thinks it is so clever. Hey we got Harry Potter, a wizard who does magic, playing in a film about magicians. How novel and clever. No, it's just, it's really silly and contrived. And then of course, when you really think about the rest of the cast, I mean, we have like Academy Award nominated and winning actors like Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine, and we got Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, uh, the great Mark Ruffalo. And like, they're just, they're sort of just criminally wasted in these films. Um, it's not that they don't have any spirit or enthusiasm in their performances, but they're just phoning it in. Like you can tell from the beginning, middle and end that this is just really a paycheck grab for them. Um, the film sort of culminates in this third act uh, that's, let's be honest, really ludicrous. And you can really see the plot going from A to B to C with just remarkable, um, predictability. I, I don't like arrogant films. To me, Now You See Me Too and its predecessor, they're arrogant films. And what I mean by that is they think they're a hell of a lot smarter than the audiences that are watching it. And they think, wink, wink, they're one step ahead. This, These films are not smarter than their audiences at all. Um, and then I guess there's something that has to be said about the magic in these films. I never once bought into the magic of uh, Now You See Me 1 or 2 because it doesn't feel like the product of, you know, loose and freewheeling magicians that just sort of do things on the spot. It feels more like the product of super powered beings that belong in Professor Charles Xavier's School for the Gifted uh, more than mortal men and women. It's just so far-fetched and so borderline stupid. Um, I sound like I'm coming down really hard on this film, and maybe I kind of am. Um, I didn't hate Now You See Me too. There's actually a really wonderful scene involving a playing card and all the characters, let's just say, 
tossing the card between each other in a very tense situation that I thought was actually pretty novel and showed a little bit of directorial flair and it looked like the cast was having fun. Um, but there's not enough sequences like this in the movie to just garner my interest and in the end, I just didn't care about this movie. I didn't care about the story. I didn't care about the continuation of the first film's plot. I didn't care about any of these characters. I didn't care about where they came from or who they are. Um, and then you have Woody Harrelson, and I don't care if this is a spoiler or not, but fuck it, I'm gonna say it anyway. He has, his character has a twin brother. So it's like a really pathetic excuse to get Woody Harrelson in this goofy wig and super white teeth, and he kind of talks with this weird effeminate lisp, and it's just, it's so ham infested and so overdone, and the, the film thinks it is a riot, and it's not, it's just kind of embarrassing. I felt kind of bad for Woody Harrelson. Um, but yeah, like I said, this film is, it's not awful. It's just so unnecessary and so forgettable. Um, and like the first film, I don't think I won't be thinking about this in 24 hours. I simply won't. It just made me want to rush home, put the Prestige Blu-ray into my player, and watch it on a continuous loop for the next 48 hours. So um, anyway, it's it's a film that's endlessly skippable. But you can certainly let me know what you think in the comments. You can let me know if I'm absolutely correct or you can let me know if I'm ass backward wrong. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this, uh, my channel and this, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm left speechless. I don't know what else I could possibly say about this movie other than the fact that I will probably never think about it ever again.